Hey everybody, welcome back to the K2N Online Paddle School. We are back here on YouTube and this week we're looking at balancing our paddles leverages through the stroke with our body's leverages throughout the stroke. As we complete a stroke, our body's movement and the shapes that we create and try to hold through the stroke are going to be changing. These changing shapes are going to conflict with the paddle's angle changing throughout the stroke. Balancing these ideas helps you maximize the most out of your stroke. If you hail to one extreme, you will always fall short from a leverage dynamic either from the paddles usage or from your own. This video will briefly go over these ideas looking at different equipment with the surf ski paddle, the outrigger paddle, and a dragon boat paddle. If you want more in-depth information breaking the body down into five different parts, breaking the stroke into five additional parts, broken into different series based on your skill level, check out the K2N online paddle school.com today. Subscribing to the website opens you up to 200 technique videos as well as a hundred drilling videos. Drilling videos are easy to digest. They're a minute long. You can watch them, go on the water and improve your technique today. The website directly helps with keeping the YouTube channel alive. If you want to support us here, go check out the website today. Cool. So let's break down some ideas. So as we're taking a stroke, we have positive blade angle, neutral and negative. Positive is as the blade is oriented in this direction in front of us. Neutral is as it is up and down, and the negative is behind us. With the outrigger paddle, this is hard to assess. We have the shaft angle and we have the blade angle, which are two different things. As this shaft is up and down neutral, the blade is still oriented positive. As the shaft is negative, the blade is now neutral. So these two things work with each other, but if you are only assessing your shaft angle, it may not be indicative of the blade's angle. So any paddle that has an offset, you must remember that your blade is still neutral as the paddle shaft itself is negative. In Dragon Boat, this concept is much simpler. The blade and the shaft are always at the same angle. So we have positive, neutral, and negative, and it's that simple. In surf ski, same idea. These blades are very slightly canted, right? So there's a little bit of an offset. So as we're looking at this being at our positive angle, this blade tip is a little bit forward from that. As I'm holding this, I'm running out of room in the ceiling area here, but as this paddle is now negative, this blade is still fighting for neutral. It would be something like this. So as the paddle's a little bit behind you, the blade is still actually neutral. This varies tremendously from different surf ski paddles to another. Some are slightly canted, as they refer to in that, but it has an offset from the shaft. Blade angles are very easy to define. The tricky part is now defining our body leverages. Obviously, this is a source of confusion and leads to many arguments on what body motions that we can create in the seated position that thoroughly maximize the propulsion of a boat. Positive, neutral, negative blade angle, very easy to visualize and summarize. But looking at motion, what is this top arm's proper body leverages? Is it up here? Is it down here? Is it somewhere in the middle? Defining these aspects is very difficult. Looking at the top arm, it is going to change as you're going through any sort of paddle stroke. It is going to change its orientation as you are completing it. Knowing through this transition, when are my body leverages beginning to maximize? Again, that's what we're gonna try and break down today. One of the simple concepts that we're gonna convey is as your blade gets closer to you, your leverages on the blade increase. Anytime we take a paddle stroke, we are extending the blade away from us into the front part of the stroke. The more extended you are, the less inherent leverages your body is going to have on the stroke. As the blade gets closer to us, all of our motion and ability to push down on the water increases dramatically. It's close to us. It's easy to feel and master this middle and back half of the stroke with our body because everything is very ergonomic in our favor. When working out in the gym, taking full repetitions is very difficult. And normally the full extension to slightly bending is the hardest because our muscles are all extended away from us. 
as we get weights closer to us, you will see people doing half repetitions. And the reason they like this is because they can do more weight much easier by operating with the muscles mostly contracted. This concept carries over into paddling. As the blade gets closer to us, our body leverages inherently are going to increase more and more. And this is where the balance starts to come in. As our paddle is extended away from us, it is going to naturally be in this positive blade angle. So the paddle's leverages are at its highest, but our body's leverages are nearing its lowest. As we complete the stroke, we get to the neutral and negative blade angle, the blade and paddle's orientation on the water is losing its efficiency comparatively to being at a positive angle. But our body's leverages are beginning to increase as the blade gets closer and closer to us. Ideas begin to intersect and synergize with each other. As we are in our weakest position, the paddle is working most in our favor in this positive orientation. As the paddle is now beginning to work against us, our body's leverages are beginning to take over in their efficiency. So some of the common mistakes in adhering to these extremes is focusing too much on your paddle's leverages. It is more efficient as a tool as we are at a positive blade angle and at a 12 to six o'clock orientation, right? The more angled this paddle is, the less effective the blade and the leverages are going to be within the stroke. So being straight up and down as well as positive are two good things that we want throughout a paddle stroke. Abusing these extremes now takes away from our body's leverages. Knowing that we want a positive blade angle with the orientation up and down, I can begin morphing my body around to make that work. The problem with following this is I have given up some of the leverages of my torso that can be much stronger. All of these muscles here must extend and stretch out to create this positive angle as well as getting the orientation from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Now that the paddle is at its most desirable leverage position, I am now in one of my weakest positions. Going from a very weak body position, engaging with the water, inherently there's not a lot of load on the blade because I'm super stretched out. I haven't had the opportunity to contract my muscles and create power. So being in this very elongated position starts the stroke very weak. The paddle's potential for energy is highest, but my potential to create energy is limited. Now abusing that more, knowing that the negative part of the stroke is inherently weaker, then the positive angle when looking at just the paddle by itself, paddlers are going to have this weak entry, get to a point where their body can now be very strong and remove the blade. Not letting this top hand travel down and fully maximize your top hand pressure and your body weight on the stroke, we get to a certain point, oh, this idea is now inefficient. Now I must remove the blade and start over again at the front. This is where running into these fallacies is very simple because even from an engineering brain, you can see that this being operated in a very specific way by itself with no human attached to it, here to here is the strongest and we should spend the most amount of time there. When you introduce the complex nature of wrist, elbow, shoulder, thoracic spine, hips, knees and your ankles and how they all operate together to create this fluid, liquid, dynamic, moving organism, it's very tough to blend that with using a simple shaped tool. As an engineer, we think of it very simply, right? But imagine having a nine joint construct that can move however it chooses in any direction, morphing around to this idea those are the things that we don't take into account. When looking at the blade by itself, it's simple. Putting in the human element and its leverages throughout the stroke, infinitely complex. So correcting some of those ideas, knowing that our top hand is strongest in a position that starts somewhere back here with a bent elbow with the top shoulder back, allows us to push through the stroke with our top hand much more effectively than starting with an arm extended. What can I do with this arm at this point except only come down? A paddler that starts with this arm in this position can both come forward and down, and the amount of force that they can create doing that is much higher than only this alone. 
does that mean for the paddle? As I have this top shoulder and top elbow back, this hand cannot be on the outside. As I pull that back, this paddle's orientation is no longer 12 to 6, but maybe 11 to 5 like so. This is where the rise of the side catch comes in, is prioritizing your human anatomy and body leverages in lieu of giving up some of the leverages with the paddle. As we complete that stroke, as the blade goes into the water and I begin turning my shoulders, this paddle will now come up and down to 12 and six as the whole blade is submerged. As my leverages begin to reveal themselves throughout the stroke, the paddle will now find that position where it is being maximized while the blade is in the water. Maximizing that leverage when the blade is in the air is meaningless. As we get that blade into the water, we wanna be in a good position, pushing through, now this paddle is in a good position. Now my body is in a good position. An idea we talk about a lot is not being afraid to complete your stroke, especially with an outrigger canoe paddle. As my paddle is now traveling behind me, this blade is only very slightly negative. And in this position, it's still neutral. My ability to push down and turn and use my hip, all of these things are strongest in the end of the stroke because all of my leverages are right here to push down. Being up in this position and pushing down to feel like you can lift your hips out of the boat is impossible. But when we're in a position like this, it's very simple to push down and get all of your body weight onto the stroke. Knowing that the paddle is at a leverage disadvantage, but you make up for it, allows you to open up that stroke and get more out of it at the end. Looking back at the surf ski blade, how complex the wing blade is, all of these shapes and designs are helping facilitate your body's leverages and allowing the blade to accentuate those ideas. A canoe paddle is very simple. It is symmetrical, it is flat, you throw it in the water and can find pressure. The wing blade identifies ideal body motion and works backwards to facilitate it. This is why the wing blade is so tricky for many paddlers when you are first learning. It is built with good technique as the baseline. So if you have poor motion or a misunderstanding of what good motion can be, using a wing blade will always be a fight. It wants you to do something very specific and if you're off doing whatever you want, this thing will beat you to death. Using a flat blade is much more forgiving. You can do whatever you want with it and it's not going to be constantly fighting you. If you use this paddle incorrectly, it will throw you from the boat, it will hurt your shoulders. There are so many things that a wing blade will do that are detrimental. Canoe paddle, again, you want to maximize the forces, but it's not actively working against you. So some of those ideas, again, knowing that this angle is stronger from a leverage point, as we go through the stroke, it is designed for this arm to be about 90 degrees at about elbow to shoulder high. And you can see this paddle is now angled even more aggressively for a side catch. As we go through this stroke, the shape and orientation of the paddle is designed for this specifically. Having asymmetrical blades, this blade only takes right side strokes. This blade only takes left side strokes. So now as you're going through this, your body is in a very strong leverage position and the paddle is also in its strongest leverage position because of the shape. As we complete the stroke and turn through, this paddle will now begin to be at 12 to six o'clock as we're approaching the power phase of the stroke. As we get to the exit, having the paddle go past the body is not the end of the world because the ability for the blade to effortlessly leave the water and flush that water from the inside of the wing is an inherent design. The slightly canted blade allows you to take a full stroke. A full stroke is defined by your hips moving to a maximum allows the blade to coordinate with your body's position and leave the water near the same time. One of the nice things about surf ski specifically is if you have good body motion and body leverages, the paddle is actively working with you. Excellent, so again, that's a brief overview 
of body leverages and paddle leverages. We spend a lot of time talking about it on the K2N online paddle school.com. If you want to learn to master it today, check out the website. There are many cool and fun things that we're doing for the new year, constantly improving the online website, more content here on YouTube. And we also have the growing Paddle Pursuit podcast found right here on the YouTube, Spotify, and Apple. On YouTube, you can subscribe for a membership, which is $2.99 morning. So if you wanna support me and the channel here, consider subscribing today. It's a small contribution, but it lets us know that you all are happy. If there are things that you want to see, it is a great way to get connected with us in the future. Thank you all so much for tuning in and supporting the channel in whatever way, even your viewership means the world to me. Don't forget to check out the Paddle Pursuit released every Monday and these technique videos will come out roughly every week until we do hit that set schedule timing. And we'll see you all on the next Paddle Tip video.